Aminie. Asipote. Awe na uzima. Ili uli wengu.
Thank you very much. Now, uh, during the Christmas season, Wakati wa za Christmas, uh, we are going to have also Christmas cantata. Pia tutakuwa na tukio ya Christmas cantata. Uh, not only uh, the Christmas cantata, the musical. Sio uh, tu nyimbo za Christmas. And uh, our gracious choir, they are going to also come out, sing Christmas songs, and enjoy it together with you. Uh, kwa etu ya gracious, watajitokeza kuimba nyimbo za Christmas pamoja nanyi. Evan, do you like it? Jim, napendezwa nayo. Yes, I hope you can also prepare yourself also for that from now on. Na tumai mwezo kuanda kwa jili ya hayo kwanzia sasa hivi. Okay, today let us open to the book of Genesis, chapter 21. Leo hii tufungue kitabu cha mwanzo mlangu wa 21. Genesis, chapter 21. Mwanzo mlangu wa 21. Genesis chapter 21, starting from verse 1 to 7, I will read only in English. Genesis chapter 27, starting from verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had visited, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the, at the set time of which and God has spoken to him. And Abraham called on the name of his son, who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham uncircumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abraham and that Sarah would nurse her children? And for I have borne him a son in his old age. Okay, I read up to verse 7. <coughs> uh, it's been a long time uh, since we reviewed about the spiritual life, right? Everyone, do you remember about the the basic posture of the spiritual life. Jem msimamo wa maisha Do you still remember them? Jem nakumbuka. Okay. Right now we are continuously uh, sharing about uh, the spiritual life. What is a spiritual life? Uh, kuendelea bado tunanena kuhusu maisha ya rohoni, maisha ya rohoni ni nini? Everyone, if a spiritual life is organized inside of your heart, ikiwa maisha ya rohoni imepangwa vilivyo ndani ya moyo wako, then spiritual life is something very simple and easy. Ah, uh, maisha ya rohoni inakuwa ni kitu rahisi mno. The reason why spiritual life is also very complicated is because we don't organize the spiritual life one by one. Also this gospel, it is something very simple. Gospel is not something that is very complicated. But then it seems like we are the ones who is making gospel to become very complicated. Gospel, if you also organize it through the word, it is something very easy and fun and simple. Even this time I went to Mombasa. And during the youth camp, I preached the gospel to one of the professors in Tum. So, as I was preaching the gospel to her, I didn't talk for like hours and hours. Just in 30 minutes, as I was showing the slide, I was able to preach the gospel. And then she was able to receive salvation. Yes, so just go to go through that slide. It only took me 30 minutes. This spiritual life is not something never complicated. So salvation also never something complicated. But what is making us to be confused and complicated is our thoughts. That's why we are continuously organizing what the spiritual life is. Yes, also today we are going to share one more thing about the spiritual life. Before we do that, let us review Kidogo. Number one. Yes, so we spoke about the basic posture of a 
of living the spiritual life. Even there is the basic heart to live the spiritual life. Even what is that? What is that? If I trust in my thought, I will fail. Number two, I am not always right. I can be wrong. Yes, so we like to insist that I am right. Even yesterday, somebody was caught by police. And then she called me. Pastor, right now we are caught by police. I don't know why they, they catch us like this. From her voice, I was able to feel that you know she is already in a position thinking that she's right. You know what I mean, right? I am right. You police, you are wrong. Hey, honey. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that was my wife. <laughs> hey, honey. Hey, honey. Hey, honey. Hey, honey. Hey, Hey, honey. Hey, Hey, honey. Hey, honey. Hey, honey. Hey, honey. Hey, honey. Hey, they stopped us for 30 minutes and then they're, you know, asking for something. I don't know what to do. They're bothering us. From her voice, I realized that mm, she thinks she is right. So I said, calm down. Let me talk to the officer. I spoke. When I listened to him, I realized that my wife was wrong. But now, police officer, he got angry because somebody was acting so right. So I said, I'm sorry, officer. I'm sorry. You know, we are one body. What can I do, right? <laughs> so I apologized. Please give us one more chance. I'll train her so that she never makes them mistakes again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so five minutes, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You are, and the police officer, you know, he was willing to help, you know. <laughs> so I told, I told the officer, let me talk to my wife. I'll train her. I'll tell her what the problem is. It seems like she doesn't know how to speak English. And then I rebuked her seriously on the phone. You think you are right? On the road, police officers, they are above the law. Everyone, is that right? On the road, if the officer says, you stop, you got to stop. On the road, on the road if officer says, so you drive at 60, you got to drive at 60. You understand what I mean, right? On the road, police officer is the law. On the road, police officer is the law. Why do you raise your voice in front of the police officer? You are right. You are wrong. I listened to him. You made a mistake. Hey, I won't go in details. I think, I think then I will be in danger. Anyways, everything. So I told her. No matter what low your voice, there were three three sisters together, the two sisters with my wife, three. Don't go alone. All of you go and then beg and say you are sorry. From your heart. You made a mistake. Say sorry. Then he will help you. Seek for his grace and mercy. It seems like grace is above the, mer above the law, right? Yes. That's why we all receive salvation, isn't 
Diposa sote tukapokea wokovu sivyo. Seek for his grace. Utafute neema yake. Beg her. Oh, now beg him. Umuombe. Say sorry. Umwambie samahani. And then they went. Kisha wakaenda. And then they begged him. Na wakamuomba. And then she never called me back so I think she just came back, right? Ah, hakunipigia tena nikana kwamba waliruhusiwa wakaenda. So anyways, hata hivyo Many people they think I am right. Watu wengi wanafikiria kuwa wako sawa. Why was she suffering for 30 minutes? Mbona walikuwa wakiteseka kwa dakika 30? I am right. Mimi niko sawa. You are wrong, right? Wewe umekosea. Yes. But what is the basic posture of the spiritual life? Lakini msimamo wa moyo Posture of the heart to live the spiritual life. Am msimamo wa moyo wa kuishi maisha ya roho ni gani? If I trust in my thought, I will Ikiwa nitaamini katika mawazo yangu nitashindwa. I am not always right mimi siko sawa kila wakati i can be wrong naweza nikakosea everyone amen amen yes if you are wrong ikiwa wewe umekosea whatever the husband says you can receive it acha chochote bwanaka atakwambia utapokea yes but then lastly she said if you are going to nag on me just hang up ikiwa utaendelea kuninini basi ukiendelea kuniongelesha basi kata simu so even until this morning i fought hadi asubuhi ya leo nimefikiria because i was on the way coming I, I should stop but I am continuing. Anyways, I'll stop there. <laughs> so, what am I saying? I am not always right. I can wakati. be wrong anytime. And there is also the starting point of the spiritual life, right? Everyone, where does your spiritual life begin exactly? Everyone, there is that exact point of where your spiritual life begins. What is that? Realize that I am a failure. Truly until now, I tried hard to live a good spiritual life. But I have failed. When you accurately realize that you have failed, and from that point on, God, he starts working in your spiritual life. Now, number three of the principle of the spiritual life. Spiritual life is to be Happy. Pastor Parky came and then he commanded us to be happy. Even when we are not happy, we cannot think straight. Pastor Parky told us to be happy. But then how are we able to also specifically live the happy spiritual life? In order for us to live the happy spiritual life, we need to move our heart on to the word of God. How do you then move your heart onto the word of God? Aaron, how do you move your heart onto the side of the word of God? By moving your mouth to the side of the word of God. It's okay you don't believe it. You don't have to believe it. But because you know for sure that the word is right, and I am wrong when you start moving your lips to the side of the word the heart will follow to the side of the word and now heart starts settle, settling on the word once the heart settles on the word all the situation and circumstances also move to the side of the word that's why even even cancer cannot be a problem. In Good News Mission, we consider cancer like cancer like speak out loud so that those people who doesn't know they can hear it. We consider cancer like cancer like like a cold. You understand, right? Yes, yeah, so when you catch flu, what do you do? You take medicine and then you're healed, right? You have cancer. Yes, yeah, so you receive treatment. And then also you gain faith in your heart. Then even cancer is not a problem at all. Everyone say my amen.
Also in our church, pia kanisani kwetu, we have a one deacon na pia tunaye mshemanzi ambaye alikuwa na saratani. Now he's completely fine. Basi sasa ako sawa kabisa. Yes, I've seen so many people like that in Good News Mission. Nimepata watu kama hao katika kanisa la Good News Mission. Good News Mission. Katika Good News Mission. At least if you are the church member of Good News Mission, ikiwa wewe ni angalau mshirika wa Good News Mission. Cancer is cold. Basi saratani ni kama homa. Me, cancer is just a cold. You understand, right? Naelewa. Yes, it's nothing. Ni kitu bure. But as soon as you hear that you have cancer, what do you what do you think? I'm ready to unapopokea unapojua kwa kuna saratani ni kitu gani nafanyika? From your heart. Ndani ya moyo wako. You are already dead. Tayari umekufa. You understand, right? Naelewa. Yes, but cancer. Lakini saratani is also nothing. Ni kitu bure. That's why although we have cancer, niposa ijapo kwa tuna saratani, we can live a happy spiritual life. Tunaweza tukaishi maisha rohoni ya furaha. Now the fourth principle of the spiritual life. Na kanuni ya nne ya maisha ya rohoni. Do you remember what it is? Je, mnakumbuka ni nini? I think starting from the fourth one now, now you are now confused, right? Kuanzia kwa kanuni ya nne mmeanza kuchanganyikiwa. What is the fourth one? Ya nne ni gani? What is the fourth one? Ya nne ni ipi? Who is the doer of your spiritual life? Nani anayetenda kazi katika maisha yako ya roho? Why is spiritual life difficult? Mbona maisha ya roho ni ngumu? Spiritual life is difficult because I am the doer of my spiritual life. Maisha ya roho inakuwa ngumu sababu mimi ndiye ninayefanya kazi katika maisha yangu ya roho. I am trying to accomplish the word that the promised word of God. That's why it is difficult. Najaribu nitimize maahadi ya Mungu idipose na kuwa ngumu. If you are not the doer, ikiwa wewe sio mtenda kazi. If you keep God as the doer of your spiritual life, kiwa utamwacha Mungu awe mtendakazi katika maisha yako ya rohoni. And there is nothing that you got to do. Basi hamna chochote ya kufanya. That's why spiritual life is easy. Diposa maisha ya rohoni ni rahisi. Even who is the doer of your spiritual life today? Mtendakazi wa maisha yako ya rohoni ni nani leo? If there is anything that we got to do, ikiwa kuna kitu chochote ambacho inastahili tufanye, it's only this. Ni hii. John chapter 6. Yohana mlango wa sita. John chapter 6 Yohana mlango wa 6 verse 28 mstari wa 28 Then they said to him what shall we do and that we may work the works of God Basi wakamwambia tufanye nini tufanyeje ili tupate kuzitenda kazi za Mungu Jesus answered and said to them This is the work of God that you believe in him who whom He sent. Yesu akajibu akawambia, hii ndiyo kazi ya Mungu mwaminini yeye aliyetumwa na yeye. They say, what shall we do that we may that we may work the works of God? Wakamwambia tufanyeje ili tupate kuzitenda kazi za Mungu. God, what is the work of God? Basi kazi za Mungu ni zipi? And Jesus is saying, na Yesu anawaambia, This is the work of God. Na hii ndiyo kazi ya Mungu. That you believe in him mumwamini yeye whom he sent aliyetumwa to believe in him kuamini katika yeye that is all we got to do hiyo ndio inastahili tufanye even we are not the doer sisi sio watenda kazi we are not the one to accomplish the promised word of god sio sisi sio wale wa kukamilisha ahadi ya mungu we are not the one to die for our sin sio sisi sio wale ambao tunastahili kufia dhambi zetu that's why jesus christ he died for our sin diposa yesu akafia dhambi zetu even the reason why you, you are making the spiritual life complicated is because You are standing at the position as the doer. Kitu ambaye inafanya mfanye maisha ya rohoni sikose kueleweka ni kuwa mmesimama katika nafasi ya yule ambaye anatenda kazi. If there's anything that you got to do for the spiritual life, ikiwa kuna kitu ambaye inastahili ufanye kwa ajili ya maisha ya rohoni, it is for you to believe in him. Ni kuamini katika yeye. Now number 5 kitu cha tano the fifth principle of the spiritual life kanuni ya tano ya maisha ya rohoni even what is that nini gani spiritual life maisha ya rohoni is to see with the heart of god ni kuona kutegemea macho ya mungu even what is the spiritual life maisha ya rohoni ni nini It is to see it with the heart of God. Ni kuona kupitia kwa mtazamo wa Mungu. It is to see it with the eyes of God. Ni kutazama kupitia kwa macho ya Mungu. Everyone, 
There was a Philip and Andrew. Akulikuwa na Filipo na Andrea. Philip, a Filipo. He saw it with his own eyes. Aliona kupitia kwa macho yake mwenyewe. To his own eyes it was impossible. Kupitia kwa macho yake mwenyewe ilikuwa haiwezekani. To his own eyes it was a misery. Akupitia kwa macho yake ilikuwa ni mambo mabaya zaidi. To his own eyes it was difficulties. Akupitia kwa macho yake ilikuwa ni mambo magumu. To his own eyes it was misery. Akupitia kwa macho yake ilikuwa ni mambo ambayo yameharibika kabisa. But with the eyes of Andrew. Lakini kupitia kwa macho ya Andrea. Andrew he saw it with the eyes of Jesus. Lakini Andrea alitazama kila kitu kwa macho ya Yesu. Right now what we have is only five barley loaves and two fish. Sasa hivi tunao mikate mitano na samaki wawili. This is something very small. Ni kitu ambacho ni kidogo mno. But if I bring it to Jesus. Lakini nitakapoileta kwa Yesu. In the eyes of Jesus. Machoni pa Yesu. This is not small. Hii sio kitu kidogo. This is something that can feed all of these people who are seated here. Hii ni kitu ambacho inaweza kawalisha watu wote wanao kama li hapa. Even the way they saw it was already different. Ah jinsi ambavyo walivyoitazama ilikuwa ni tofauti. Philip he lived with his own eyes. Ah Filipo alitumia macho yake mwenyewe. That's why he cannot help but suffer. Diposa hakuwa na budi ila kuangamia. If you are suffering, you are not suffering because of your husband. Ikiwa unateseka sio kwa sababu ya mume wako. If you are suffering, you are not suffering because of your wife. Ah ukiwa unateseka sio kwa sababu ya mke wako. If you are suffering, you are not suffering because of disease or cancer. Ah ukiwa unateseka sio kwa sababu ya ugonjwa ama saratani. If you are suffering, you are not suffering because you don't have a job. Ah ukiwa unateseka sio kwa sababu umekosa kazi. If you are suffering, ikiwa unateseka you're suffering because of only one, one reason unateseka kwa sababu ya kitu kimoja tu peke yake because so you are looking at it with the eyes of your own ni kwa sababu unaitazama kupitia kwa macho yako mwenyewe spiritual life is to see with the heart of god um, maisha rohoni ni kutazama kupitia kwa moyo wa Mungu now there was a sixth now principle of the spiritual life kulikuwa na kanuni ya sita ya maisha rohoni what is the sixth principle of the spiritual life kanuni ya sita ya maisha rohoni ni gani spiritual life maisha rohoni is to exchange ani kubadilishana spiritual life is to what maisha rohoni ni nini you can never live the spiritual life by yourself hauwezi ukaishi maisha rohoni peke yako in order for you to live the spiritual life ili kwamba uweze kuishi maisha rohoni you got to exchange your heart lazima ubadilishe moyo wako yes and listening is also very important ah kusikiza ni ya maana pia after listening you got to also exchange what you have heard baada ya kusikiza pia inastahili uweze kubadilishana yale uliyosikia that's why in our church diposa katika kanisa letu right after sunday morning service is finished baada ya ibada ya asubuhi kukamilika now we are having the 55 group fellowship tuna mkutano ya watu tano so that they can exchange their heart ili kwamba waweze kubadilishana mioyo so that they can also learn from one another ili kwamba waweze kufundishana kutoka kwa mmoja wao in another word that is called the fellowship na hii uh, kwa njia nyingine inaitwa ushirika everyone we are not used to having fellowship ah uh, sisi ni watu ambao hatuna mazoea ya ushirika that's why often times we feel very awkward and far from fellowship ah uh, diposa mara nyingi tunasikia vibaya na kwenda mbali na ushirika but the more fellowship that you come into lakini jinsi unavyoingia ndani ya ushirika God starts working. Mungu anaanza kufanya kazi. Pastor Park he told me. Mchungaji Park aliniambia. Johan. Hey, Johan. Spiritual life Ma is to have fellowship. Maisha ya rohoni ni kuwa na ushirika. If you have fellowship, ikiwa utashiriki, then the Holy Spirit will flow. Basi uh, uh, Roho Mtakatifu atatiririka. When the Holy Spirit flows, wakati Roho Mtakatifu anapotiririka, then the Holy Spirit will work. Basi Roho Mtakatifu atafanya kazi. Sema amen. Amen. Even there's nothing that I've done. Hakuna chochote nilichofanya. Actually often times I am not even here in Nairobi. Hakika hata wakati mwingi siko hapa Nairobi. Why I am going around also having fellowship with other churches in Kenya. Ninapozunguka na kuwa na ushirika na makanisa mengine Kenya. I can see it is God who is working in Nairobi. Naweza nikaona jinsi ambavyo ni Mungu peke yake anayefanya kazi Nairobi. I am so happy that I am not the doer in Nairobi. Ninao furaha kwa sababu mimi sio ni yule ambaye anatenda kazi Nairobi. Because I am not even here. Kwa sababu hata siko hapa. It is God who is the doer in leading the hearts of brothers and sisters. Ni Mungu ambaye anatenda kazi ya kuongoza roho ya wandugu na wadada. That's why while we just have a fellowship together. Diposa tunapokuwa na ushirika kwa pamoja. God will save us from the worldly heart. Ah Mungu atatuokoa kutokana na roho ya ulimwengu. God will also save us from our desire. Mungu atatuokoa kutokana na tamaa. God will also save us from the problems. Na Mungu atatuokoa kutokana na shida. God will also save us from disease. Na Mungu atatuokoa kutokana na magonjwa. God will also save us from the sickness. Na Mungu atatuokoa 
God will also save us from difficulties and problems and sufferings. But we despise fellowship. Instead of trying to come into the fellowship, we are just busy trying to solve the suffering and the problem. That's why suffering and the problem is never ending. One problem after the other. Why? Because we don't go according to the principle. Even if you go according to the principle, then spiritual life is very easy. What is the principle? The servant of God, he taught us how to live the spiritual life. Everyone, what is that? This side. What is that? No lunch for you. <laughs> this side. What is that? You are very weak in eating. <laughs> I'll give you one more chance. Everyone's spiritual life is what? <sighs> eating did work, right? Yes. <laughs> Everyone's spiritual life is to have? Fellowship. He uh, said, Johan, come in the fellowship. Uh, if you have fellowship, then the Holy Spirit will flow. And, and when, when the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit flows, the Holy Spirit will work. Everyone, what is the what is the button to press so that you can make Holy Spirit to work in your life? You are not a doer. You are just coming in the fellowship. Now, number seven, the principle of our spiritual life. Number seven. From the seventh one, I will write. Purposely, I didn't write. Because then it's going to make it very long. Even last week, we briefly discussed about the seventh principle of the spiritual life, right? Even what is the seventh principle of the spiritual life? Spiritual life is to Spiritual life is to obey the word of God. Last week we discussed about uh, Jacob. Jacob, he did not have any condition for him to call himself Esau. But then how was he able to receive the blessing? Let us first open to Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. Let us read a verse 8 all together. Genesis chapter 27 verse 8 We will read it obeying the word right We will read it with a loud voice uh, Pamoja Verse 8 ready go Now therefore my son obey my voice according to what I command you. Verse 13. Let's read it all together with louder voice than that. Everyone are you ready? 13. Ready? Go. Yes, he says, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. <laughs> I think it was last year, New Year's message. <laughs> Pastor Park, he said, 
mchungaji paka alisema I think some of you might remember Au wengine wenu mnaweza kukumbuka While you moved forward listening to the voice of the servant of God Mnapopiga hatua na kusikiza sauti ya mtumishi wa Mungu And then if you have any harm na ikiwa uko na if you have any loss ukiwa uko na hali ya kupoteza God is going to compensate everything Mungu anaenda kukuregeshea kila kitu Ever, Is there anyone who remember that word from the New Year's message raise your hand Je kuna mmoja wenu ambaye anakumbuka kuhusu hiyo jumbe ya mwaka mpya Can you raise your hand high Uinua mkono juu kabisa From the New Year's message Kutoka kwa ujumbe wa mwaka mpya While you follow the voice of the servant of God. Napofuata sauti ya mtumishi wa Mungu. If there is any problem. Ikiwa kutakuwa na shida yoyote. If there is any harm. Ikiwa kutakuwa na madhara yoyote. God is going to compensate. Basi Mungu atawaregesheni. First 13 means that. Um study wa 13 inamaanisha hivyo. Let your curse be on me my son. Wacha laana yako na iwe juu yangu mwanangu. And my son you obey my voice. Yes mwana nisikize tu sauti yangu. And as you obey my voice and then move forward. Unaposikiza sauti yangu na kupiga tu mbele. And then you have any harm. Na ikiwa utakuwa na madhara yoyote. Let all the curse be on me. Wacha hiyo laana yote na iwe juu yangu. Even then do we have to worry about that? Je, tuna hofu yoyote kuhusu hayo? We don't have to worry about it. Hatuna haja kuwa na hofu. Because all the curse we are going to receive. Ya kwa sababu laana yote tutakayopokea. Now Jesus is going to receive everything. Kwa sababu Yesu anaenda kupokea kila kitu. Now let's flip one page to chapter 26. Turuke ukurasa moja twende kwa mlango wa 26. Chapter 26. Mlango wa 26. Verse 4. Mstari wa And I will make your descendants uh, multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants uh, all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Here it says, Apanasem. all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Ataifa yote ya ulimwengu itabarikiwa. Ever repeat after me, all the nations. Of the earth shall be blessed. Verse five, because. Study watano kwa sababu. Now verse five is talking about how they were able to be blessed. Am study watano na nena jinsi ambavu waliweza kubarikiwa. Even because. Kwa sababu. Is it because that they came to church diligently? Kwa sababu walikuja kanisani vizuri. Is it because that they did a lot of volunteer work? Kwa sababu walitolea zaidi. Is it because that they helped a lot of other people? Ah, kwa sababu walisaidia watu wengine. Nothing like that. Si kitu kama hicho. What was the reason for the blessings? Sababu ya kubarikiwa ni gani? It says all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Ah, matai fayote ya dunia itawatabarikiwa because kwa sababu Abraham obeyed my voice Ibrahimu alisikia sauti yangu Ever repeat after me Abraham obeyed my voice Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge my commandment my statutes and my laws So Abraham obeyed my voice. Ibrahimu alisikiliza sauti yangu. Every spiritual life is to obey the word of God. Ah maisha rohoni ni kusikiza sauti ya Mungu. As you obey the word of God. Napolitii neno la Mungu. Yes, it may be different from your thoughts. Inaweza kuwa tofauti na mawazo yako. However, when you obey the word of God. Hata hivyo unapolitii. Yes, so you can look back and see how God has bestowed much blessings upon your life. Utaona jinsi ambavyo Mungu amekuwekea baraka nyingi katika maisha yako. When I look back my life. Anapoangalia maisha yangu. Yes, every turn point of my life for there was the word of God. Katika kila hatua ya maisha yangu kuna ukazi ya Mungu. There was the guidance of the servant of God. Na kulikuwa na muongozo wa mtumishi wa Mungu. You know, I never you know thought about going to university. Hata pia sikufikiria namna ya kuingia katika chuo kikuu. You know, my dream was just to become a soldier in America. Ah ndoto yangu ilikuwa ni kuwa tu mwanajeshi katika nchi ya America. Actually, I thought that my life is already all ruined. Na nilikuwa nimefikiria kwa maisha yangu yote yameharibika. Just to become a soldier. Ah na kukua ah mwanajeshi Afghanistan. Na kuingia katika nchi ya Afghanistan. Go to Iraq. Na kuingia Iraq. Just be shot to death. Na nipigwe risasi nife. I didn't have any hope inside of my heart. Sikukuwa na matumaini yoyote katika maisha yangu. There was the guidance of the servant of God. Kini wakati huu kukawa na muongozo wa mtumishi wa Mungu. Hey Yohan, you got to go to university. Eh hey, Yohan, uingie katika chuo kikuu. Somehow that time I was able to just listen to the word of the servant of God the way it is. Ah wakati huu nikasikiza tu neno la mtumishi wa Mungu jinsi ilivyo. Okay, which university should I go to? Basi niingie katika chuo kikuu gani? Or go to this and that university. Basi uingie katika hii chuo kikuu. Okay. Ni sawa. All I did was to just say yes. Ah kitu nilichofanya ni kusema tu ndio. While just saying yes. Niliposema ndio. I can see how God is leading us. Ah niliona namna Mungu leading my life into the blessed life. Mungu aliongoza maisha yangu 
katika maisha ya baraka. That's how I went to university. Hivyo ndivyo nilivyoingia katika chuo kikuu. I graduated from the university. Na nikafuzu katika chuo kikuu. I called the servant of God. Na nikampigia mtumishi wa Mungu. Okay, I graduated from the university. What should I do? Sasa nimefuzu kutoka katika chuo kikuu nifanye nini? He told me to come to Korea. Akaniambia niende katika nchi ya Korea. So from New York I went to Korea. Kutoka nchi ya New York nikaenda Korea. Okay, I came to Korea. What should I do? Nimeingia katika nchi ya Korea nifanye nini? Yes, so go to army. Basi uingie katika jeshi. I didn't have to join the army in Korea. Ah, sikutaka kuingia katika jeshi ya Korea. And but then she told me to go to army. Lakini akaniambia ingia katika jeshi. So I went and joined Korean army. Nikaingia katika jeshi ya Korea. I got discharged. Na nikaingia kanisani. The servant of God, I got discharged. What should I do? Ah, nimeingia nimeingia nimefanya hivi na hivi nifanye nini? Come to theology school. Basi ingia katika I went to theology school. Nikaingia katika chuo cha theolojia. And then one day, basi siku moja, because the park he told me, Johan, mchungaji paka kaniambia Yohan. Now you go to Kenya as a missionary. Basi uingie uende katika nchi ya Kenya kama missionary. I never thought about Africa in my life. Ah, sikuwahi fikiria katika bara bara la Afrika katika maisha yangu. I'm already a resident in America. Ah, kwa sababu nimekuwa mkaji katika nchi ya Amerika. I thought if I were to go then I thought that they are going to send me to America. Basi nilikuwa nafikiria kuwa baada ya kumaliza watanituma katika nchi ya Amerika. But one day Pastor Paki told me you go to America. Lakini siku moja mchungaji akaniambia No. Africa. Ingia katika bara la Africa. Kenya. Nchi ya Kenya. Okay, when should I go? Basi ni siku gani niende? Go tomorrow. Basi enda kesho. I say yes. Nikasema ndio. I came the day after tomorrow. Na nikakuja siku baada ya kesho. You stay in Nairobi church. Ah, wewe kaa katika kanisa la Nairobi. And until now for now more than nine years I'm staying in Nairobi church. Hadi sasa ni zaidi ya miaka tisa niko katika kanisa la Nairobi. Everyone, amen. Amen. Every turning point of my life katika kila hatua ya maisha yangu there was the guidance kulikuwa na muongozo which it did not match with my heart ambayo haikuambatana na moyo wangu oh why i obey the voice of the servant of god lakini nilipotii sauti ya mtumishi wa mungu i can see how my life is so blessed nimeona namna ambavyo maisha yangu imebarikiwa mno even do you see that my life is blessed je mnaona kuwa maisha yangu imebarikiwa even if you can also only obey the word of god ikiwa wewe pia utatii tu neno la mungu whether it matches your thought and your plans or not Like Abraham Abraham kama Ibrahimu blessings is waiting for you basi baraka zinakusubiri now sasa that is the seventh a uh, principle of the spiritual life. Yoni kanuni ya saba ya maisha rohoni. Today we would like to speak about the eighth uh, principle of spiritual life. Leo hii tungependa kunena kuhusu kanuni ya nane ya maisha ya rohoni. What is the eighth principle of the spiritual life? Kanuni ya nane ya maisha rohoni ni gani? Everyone spiritual life is to unite our heart with God. Ah maisha rohoni ni kuunganisha mioyo yetu pamoja na moyo wa Mungu. Spiritual life is to unite our heart. Maisha rohoni kuunganisha mioyo yetu. Our heart with God. Mioyo yetu na Mungu. Spiritual life is to unite our heart with God. Maisha rohoni kuunganisha mioyo yetu na Mungu. Everyone, what does it mean to unite our heart with God? Inamaanisha nini tunaposema kuhusu kuunganisha mioyo yetu na Mungu? What does it mean by to unite our hearts? Inamaanisha nini kuunganisha mioyo? Specifically how do we unite our heart with God? Kwa hakika tunaunganishaje mioyo yetu na Mungu? When you look in the book of Acts chapter 13, tunapoangalia kitabu ya matendo ya mitume mlango wa 13, Acts chapter 13 Matendo ya mitume mlango wa 13 First 22 na mstari wa 22 Acts chapter 13 verse 22 Matendo ya mitume mlango wa 13 mstari wa 22 And when he had removed him he raised up from them and David as king to whom also he gave testimony and said I have found David the son of Jesse a man after my own heart who will do all my will mstari wa 22 nalipokuisha akumuondoa huyo akamuinua Daudi awe mfalme wao ambaye alimshuhudia akisema nimemuona Daudi mwana wa Yese mtu ninayependezwa naye ninayependezwa naye moyo wangu 
atakufanya mapenzi yangu yote. I have found David, nimempata Daudi, the son of Jesse, mwana wa Yese, a man after my own heart. Mtu ambaye ana moyo kama wangu. Even God is now searching for people like David on this earth. Mungu sasa anatafuta watu kama Daudi. Yes, so searching for those people like David. Ana anatafuta watu kama Daudi. Yes, so what is special about David? Basi ni kitu gani maalum kumhusu Daudi? David is the one who was after his after the heart of God. Daudi ni mtu ambaye alikuwa na moyo sawa na moyo wa Mungu. David is the one who was able to unite his heart together with God. Daudi ni mtu ambaye aliweza kuunganisha moyo wake na moyo wa Mungu. Even David is the one who was able to follow the heart of God regardless of his thought and his own idea. Daudi ni mtu ambaye aliweza kufuata moyo wa Mungu, ajalishi mawazo yake na mpangilio wake ilikuwa mimi. Many people watu wengi when the heart of God na moyo wa Mungu is different from their own plans. Inapokuwa tofauti na mpangilio yao. When the word of God neno la Mungu is different from their own own heart inapokuwa tofauti na mioyo yao when the guidance of god is different from their own plan wakati muongozo wa mungu inapokuwa tofauti na mpangilio yao they forsake their own plan asiati wanatupilia mbali mpangilio yao they forsake their own thoughts asiati wanatupilia mbali mawazo yao they forsake the word of god wanalitupilia mbali neno la mungu everyone now what is the spiritual life basi maisha roho ni nini the eighth principle of the spiritual life is to kanuni ya nane ya maisha roho ni nini unite our heart with god kuunganisha God yes found David whose heart was after his heart. Daudi Mungu amempata Daudi mtu ambaye akona moyo kama Mungu. heart was the same with God. Ah Daudi ni mtu ambaye moyo wake ilikuwa ni sawa na Mungu. Now God he is able to do his will through such a person. Da Mungu anaweza kufanya mapenzi yake kupitia kwa mtu kama huyo. Also in this generation. Hata katika hiki kizazi. God is also searching for such people. Ah Mungu anatafuta watu kama hao. The people watu whose heart is so united together with God. Ambao mioyo yao imeunganika na moyo wa Mungu. Even right now electricity is coming on. Sasa hivi umeme inatembea. Why? Kwa sababu gani? Because all these lights kwa sababu hita yote are connected together with the Kenya power. Tayari zimeunganika na Kenya power. Everyone in Kenya power. Ah wakati Kenya power. And then these lights are connected together. Na hizi mataa zimeunganika pamoja. From then on, kwanza wakati huo, the power and the energy that is in Kenya power starts working also in Nairobi church. Nguvu ya umeme ambayo inapatikana katika Kenya power inaanza kufanya kazi katika Nairobi church. In the same same way, vivyo hivyo, when your heart can be united, wakati moyo wako imeunganika, when your heart can be connected together with the heart of God, wakati moyo wako imeunganika nika pamoja na moyo wa Mungu the power in god ha, ile uwezo ndani ya Mungu energy in god na ile uwezo ndani ya Mungu the blessings in god baraka ndani ya Mungu the strength in god ha, nguvu ndani ya Mungu wisdom in god hekima ndani ya Mungu now can be manifested through you as well zinaweza kudhihirishwa hata kupitia wewe when ni wakati gani when your hearts are connected together with the heart of god wakati moyo wako imeunganika na moyo wa mungu when your heart is so united together with the heart of god wakati moyo wako imeunganika na moyo wa mungu that's why god says iposa mungu anasema i have found david the son of jesse a man after my own heart nimempata daudi mwana wa yese mtu ambaye ana moyo sawa na moyo wangu who will do Oh my will. Atakaye fanya mapenzi yangu yote. God wanted to accomplish his will through each and one of us. Ah Mungu anataka kutimiza mapenzi yake kupitia kwa kila mmoja wetu. God wants to do the work of accomplishing his will through each and one of us. Mungu anataka kufanya kazi ya kutimiza mapenzi yake kupitia sisi. To accomplish that work. Ili aweze kulitimiza hilo kazi. He is doing the work of a uniting our heart together with God. Anafanya kazi ya kuunganisha mioyo yetu pamoja na moyo wake. Then to be more specific ili tuwe dhahiri zaidi and how do we unite our heart with god tunawezaje kuunganisha mioyo yetu pamoja na mungu to unite means a kuunganisha inamaanisha to unite a kuunganisha inamaanisha to unite means a kuunganisha inamaanisha to speak the same word as god kunena neno sawa na neno la mungu to unite means kuunganisha na maanisha how do we unite our heart tunawezaje kuunganisha mioyo yetu how can we connect our heart with god tunawezaje kupatanisha mioyo yetu pamoja na mungu no matter what kind of thought is coming arising from us haijalishi ni wazo aina gani inayoibuka ndani yetu not speaking my own word sio kunena maneno yangu mwenyewe to speak 
Akunena, the same word as God. Kunena neno sawa na neno la Mungu. If God says so you're righteous, ikiwa Mungu anasema kwa wewe ni mwenye haki, then say righteous. Wewe pia unasema ya kwa wewe ni mwenye haki. Even that is uniting your heart together with God. Hivyo ndivyo kuunganisha moyo wako na moyo wa Mungu. If God says so you are holy, ikiwa Mungu anasema kwa wewe ni mtakatifu, then that is to unite your heart with God. Basi hivyo ndivyo kuunganisha moyo wako na moyo wa Mungu. Let's open to the book of Romans chapter 3. Tufungue kitabu cha Warumi mlango wa 3. Romans Warumi chapter 23 Au Warumi mlango wa 20 Romans chapter 3 Warumi mlango wa 3 verse 23 na mstari wa 23 Yes so verse 23 he says Ah mstari wa 23 inasema For all have sinned Kwa sababu wote wamefanya dhambi Yes dhan. it is true that all have sinned Ndio ni kweli wote wamefanya dhambi And dhan. fall short of the glory of God Na wakapungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu Even is that true Je ni kweli Yes that is very true Hiyo ni ukweli kabisa But why did he write to verse 23 Lakini mbona akaandika mstari wa 23 He has written verse 23 Ameandika mstari wa 23 Because so she wanted to tell us verse 24 Everyone, which comes later 23 is later or 24 is later? Everyone, 24 is later. God, he explained 23 so that he can speak 24 into our lives. But many people, they say, Hey, how can you say you are righteous? The Bible says, For all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. Then I want to tell them. Why do you only stop at 23? Bona mukome katika mstari wa shirini na tatu. There is a 24. Kuna mstari wa shirini na ine. What is 24? Mstari wa shirini na ine. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Wame sabiwa haki bure kwa neema yake kwa njia ya ukumbozi ulio katika Kristo Yesu. The Bible says. Biblia inasema. It says so we are justified. Inasema kwa tumehesabiwa haki. We are freed. Ah tumefanywa bure. Tumehesabiwa haki bure. By the grace of God. Kupitia kwa neema ya Mungu. Through what? Kupitia kwa njia gani? Nothing else. Sio njia nyingine. But through the redemption. Lakini kupitia kwa ukumbozi. That is in Christ Jesus. Ambaye inapatikana ndani ya Kristo Yesu. Even when we look onto ourselves. Tunapojitazama sisi wenyewe. Ndiyo yes, I'm a sinner. Ndiyo, mini what are you going to speak about what you see about yourself? Yale, or mwenyewe, ama, are you going to speak the word of God? Ama neno la Mungu. Everyone, the eighth principle of our spiritual life ya nane ya rohoni, is to unite our heart with God. Ni mio yetu na Mungu. I have found David, a mimi ni Daudi, the son of Jesse, mwana wa yese, a man after my own heart. Mutu what is the heart of God? Amen after my own heart. Everyone, what is wangu. the heart of God? Do you think heart of God is verse 23? To say that you are a sinner? Yes, that's what you were 23. Yes, so you are a sinner. But what is the heart of God? To finally make you into verse 24. Everyone, what is the real heart of God to make you a sinner for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and you all go to hellfire is that the heart of God what is the heart of God heart of God is upon verse 24 many people they easily say I'm a sinner but not many people speak the same word as God which is verse 24 yes all have sinned Yes, so you are a sinner. But you are justified. Freely. By His grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. In order for Him to explain 24, He has spoken about 23. But people only want to remain in 23. They don't want to move to 24. They want to only want to 
to stay in 23. Wanataka tukubaki katika mstari wa 23. And say I am a sinner. Kusema kuwa mimi ni mwenye dhambi. I have seen in my heart. Mimi niko na dhambi ndani ya moyo wangu. What the Bible say? Lakini Biblia inasema And now the eighth principle of spiritual life. Kanuni ya nane ya maisha ya rohoni. To unite your heart together with God. Kupatanisha moyo wako na moyo wa Mungu. Unite your heart together with God. Unapopatanisha moyo wako na moyo wa Mungu. The will of God will manifest through each and one of you. Mapenzi ya Mungu itadhihirika ndani ya kila mmoja wenu. Amen. 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 Yes, then how do you unite your heart together with Utawezaje God? kuunganisha moyo wako na moyo wa Mungu? Speaking the same way that God says about you from the Bible. Kusema neno sawa na jinsi ambavyo Mungu ananeno kuhusu wewe katika Biblia. Freely. Adiposa umehesabiwa hapo. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Kupitia kwa neema yake, kupitia kwa mkombozi inayopatikana ndani ya Kristo Yesu. Today we read about Abraham Genesis chapter 12. Leo hii tumesoma kuhusu Ibrahimu katika mwanzo mlango wa 12. Yes, so we can see that God has given him the word of God. Tunaona kuwa Mungu alimpatia neno la Mungu. And then continuously leading the life of Abraham so that his heart can be united with God. Anakuendelea anaongoza maisha ya Ibrahimu ili moyo wake uweze kupatanishwa na moyo wa Mungu. God is also doing the same same works in our life. Na Mungu anafanya kazi sawa na hayo katika maisha yetu Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 um, uh, mwanzo mlango wa 12 God has given the promise unto Abraham uh, Mungu amepeana ahadi kwa Ibrahim He says I will make you a great nation I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing God has given him the promise. Mungu amepea Ibrahimu ahadi. However, hata hivyo, when he first received the word of God, unapopokea neno la Mungu kwanza, yes, Abraham was a person who could not speak the same word as God. Ah, Ibrahimu alikuwa ni mtu ambaye hawezi nena neno sawa na Mungu. He was speaking his own heart. Alikuwa ananena moyo wake mwenyewe, mawazo yake. That's why when you look at the chapter 12, unapotazama mlango wa 12, verse 13, na mstari wa 13, now he is lying to Egyptians saying that his wife is a sister. Ana anasema uongo mbele wa Misri kwa mke wake ni dada yake First 13 Na mstari wa 13 Please say you please say you are my sister and that it may be well with me for your sake and that I may live because of you Atafadhali useme wewe ni ndugu yangu iwe heri kwangu kwa ajili yako na nafsi yangu Ishi kwa ajili yako. Every when you look at Abraham, unapomtazama Ibrahimu, Abraham is just continuously speaking of what he is seeing with his own eyes. Ibrahimu kuendelea na nena kuhusu yale anaoona na maisha yake mwenyewe. Yes, he received the promise. Ndio amepokea ahadi. But he doesn't look like a man of promise at all. Lakini haonekani kama mtu wa ahadi kabisa. Because we don't have time. Kwa sababu hatuna muda. Chapter 15. Mlango wa 15. When you look at from verse 1 to 6, unapotazama kuanzia mstari wa kwanza hadi 6. Now Abraham is falling into sin again. Ibrahimu tena anaangukia dhambi. In verse 1, mstari wa kwanza, after these things the word of the Lord came to Abraham, Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Baada ya mambo hayo, neno la Bwana lilimkujia Ibrahimu katika njia likinena usiogope Ibrahimu mimi ningao yako na dhawabu yako kubwa sana But verse 2 lakini mstari wa pili she doesn't speak the same word as verse 1 haneni neno sawa na mstari wa kwanza now she starts speaking his own words sasa anaanza kunena maneno yake mwenyewe But Abraham said Abraham akasema Lord God what will you give me sing i go childless and the heir of my house as is Eliezer of Damascus e bwana mungu utanipa nini nami naenda zangu hali sina mtoto mtoto na atai atai atakaye miliki nyumba yangu ni huyu Eliezeri mdamaski yes he doesn't believe in the word of god aamini katika neno la mungu although god is saying japo kwa mungu anasema hey do not be afraid usiogope hey do not be afraid johan hey johan usiogope do not be afraid john ah usiogope john hey do not be afraid maina hey usiogope maina do not be afraid kimani usiogope kimani do not be afraid odiambo usiogope odiambo God is saying what? Mungu anasema nini? 
I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Then if your heart is united, <laughs> if your heart is connected with God, then what do you have to say? Yes, surely Lord. Yes, I believe that you are my shield. Yes, so you are exceedingly great reward in my life. But he doesn't speak the same word. He is speaking his own word. And now, <coughs> chapter 17. Chapter 17. Now when Abraham was 99 years old, God, he appeared again. <coughs> yes, he says in verse 2, he says, and I will make my covenant between me and you. And then again, Verse 3 says, And God talked with him, saying, And then in verse 5 he says, And for I have made you a father of many nations. Verse 6 he says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of you. Verse 7 he says, And I will establish my covenant between me and you. Verse 8 he says, Also I give to you. Verse 15, it says, Then God said to Abraham. Verse 16, it says, And I will bless her. Uh, also in the middle of 16, it says, And then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people so shall be from her. <coughs> and verse 19, it says, I will establish my covenant with him. Verse 20, it says, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him. And then in the end of 20, it says, And I will make him a great nation. 21, it says, But my covenant I will establish with Isaac. When you look at the whole chapter of 17, God is saying, I will. I will. God has spoken to Abraham. Mungu I will. Nitafanya. I will. Nitafanya. And God said, Na Mungu anasema, continuously God is speaking to Abraham saying, I will, I will, I will, I will. Mungu kuendelea na nenea Ibrahimu anasema, nitafanya, nitafanya, nitafanya. Everyone, we're in the Bible. Ka, ni wapi katika Biblia? Did God tell Abraham, you should. You should. You should. You have to. You have to. You will. You will. God has never said it like that. All the chapter of chapter 17. I will. I will. I will. Oh God, you will? If, he is, if his heart is so united with the heart of God, then he has to speak what? Same as the word of God, right? God will. God will. God will. Everyone repeat after me. God will. God will. God will. Why is your spiritual life difficult? Because although God says, I will. I will. I will. He said in chapter 13 alone, 13 times. 13 times he says, I will. I will. I will. Why are you in difficulties? Because you say, I will. Not God will. You are trying to accomplish the word. That's why it is difficult for you. But again, in the midst of 13 I wills, in 18, and Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. What is 18? On my Bible, Biblia yangu, I wrote next to the small space, niliandika, katika yu mstari liyo baki ndogo, verse 18, a, nane, I said, Abraham's thought. A, ya God is continuously saying, I will. A, Mungu nasema I, will. Atafanya. I will. Nita. Abraham says, anasema, Oh God, 
that Ishmael might live before you. Everyone, is he speaking the same word as God or Je, different word? Different. Verse 19, it says, Then God said, No! Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. He says, then God says, no! Mungu akasema, sivyo. Abraham said, Ibrahim akasema, oh, that Ishmael might live before you, God. Ishmaeli na Ishmaeli yako, eh, buwana. No! Sivyo. That is wrong. Iyo ni, iyo ni mbaya. No! La, sivyo. That is not my heart. Iyo siyo moyo wangu. No! A, a, la. That is your thoughts. Iyo ni mawazo yako. Everyone. Kila moja wenu. Today, leo hi, God has made all of you as Abraham. Mungu wamefanya nyinyi nyote kama Ibrahimu. Only those who said amen shall receive that blessing. Na wale tu ambao walisema amen watapokea hizo baraka. Everyone, God has already made you into Abraham. Mungu amekwisha kukufanya kuwa Ibrahimu. God has made you into Abraham. Mungu amekwisha kukufanya kuwa Ibrahimu. Everyone, then who are you? Basi wewe ni nani? You are the man of faith. Wewe ni mtu wa imani. God has already made you into a man of faith. Mungu amekwisha kukufanya mtu wa imani. Everyone, why do you think God has written this word in the Bible? Basi mnafikiri ni sababu gani Mungu ameandika maneno haya katika Biblia? To reveal Abraham's faithlessness. God wants to tell you that you are Abraham. I have made you into the man of faith. When you look at somebody, when you look at Kimani, when you look at Jessica, when you look at Patrick, when you look at David, when I look at David, when I look at David, when I look at Odiambo, when I look at Odiambo, when I look at Rachel. When I look at so and so, you don't look like Abraham. You don't look like a man of faith. But God says, You are the man of faith. You have great faith. Everyone, you, are you the man of faith or are you the one who doesn't have faith? Everyone, Spiritual life Maisha rohoni is to unite our heart with God. Now in this generation, in order for God to accomplish His will on this earth, he is, he is searching for those people whose hearts are united with God. But to unite our heart with God is very easy. To unite means to speak the same word as God. So God says, Abraham, no! That is not my will. That is not my heart. Hey, my heart is and that Sarah is going to give birth to Isaac. Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. When God said no, God, I don't have faith. Then God said no. God, I am difficult. Then God said, no. God, God said no. Hey, you gotta be strong no on that. God, I have a cancer, so I feel like I will die. Then God said, no. God, I am difficult because of this problem. Then God said, no. And God, Na mungu. what else? <coughs> I am difficult because of my husband. Then God said, Na ugumu sababu ya mume wangu. Na mungu anasema, la. God, God, I am difficult because of my wife. Then God said, God, I am difficult because I don't have a job. Then God said, no. The one who said no will get you a job. But not me, okay? So, so don't come. 
Don't come to see me. <laughs> the one who said no. You will have a job. I will bless you with the job. No, your husband is fine. No, your wife is fine. Hey, that cancer is not a problem. That sickness is not a problem. Everyone. God is searching for those people whose hearts are united with him. Then how do you unite your heart? To speak the same way as God speaks. Everyone repeat after me. No. no. Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son. And you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. Everyone, is it clear with you? I hope you no longer spit what you think. I hope you can also only speak what God says. Then your heart will be united. When God says you are righteous, you say you are Righteous. Then that's one heart, united heart with God. When God says no, you also say no. That is united heart with God. I hope you speak the same word as God. And have your heart united with God. The will of God shall be accomplished through each and one of those who are seated here. Let us pray all together as you meditate upon this word. How can I unite my heart with God? So that the will of God may be accomplished. Let us pray before God individually. Heavenly Father God, until now I lived a life of saying I have problem, but God, you said no. Baba. Heavenly Father God, until now I lived a life saying I have a problem, Baba, but God, you ishi. said no. Heavenly Father God, until now I said I have a problem, Baba, but God, God, you said no. Lord, you may lead our life Mungu so that our yetu. hearts may be united together with you. Lord, you may wewe. bless each and one of us who are seated here today no, so that all of their hapa. hearts may be united together with you by speaking the same word as God says. Na kusema maneno sawa na jinsi unavyonena. We give all this into your hands. Na pena hayo yote mkononi mwako. In the name mwako. of Jesus Christ we pray. Katika jina la Kristo Yesu tumeomba. Amen. Today uh, we have uh, holy communion and uh,